Perfect. Uh, then welcome also from my side. Welcome all attendees um, to my talk on uh, open source de centric development process. Uh, in the next uh, approximately 25 to 30 minutes, I'd like to to um, give my personal take on why it should be uh, the new normal to um, to do a um, open source centric development process. First of all, I'd like to give you a short agenda um, and a short um, outline on the technology I've, I've been using. Uh, usually when, when I'm doing talks like this, I, I always want to do something new. This time um, I tried a new te um, a presentation technology called Reveal.js, which is a HTML5 um, application where you can actually do the slides in um, Markdown only. Um, I hope this is going to work out. If not, uh, bear with me, please. So um, now for the agenda, um, I'd like to give you a short introduction on to who I am, then um, on the strategic impact of being open, then, of course, uh, an open source centric development process, as some of you might know, comes at some, may come at some disadvantages. There are also, I think, some challenges that you have to face while adopting an open source first citizen development approach. Then um, there is also a strategic impact, which I try to summarize under the term reach. And um, of course, uh, there is also always a trade-off between agility and majority in your development process. And I think that that is a reason why why some people don't do a too much uh, open source centric development approach and um also it's a it's about communication so uh, when you when you do such an uh, such a process um it, it also involves the, the the community as a as a touch point for communicating even outside your own organization and then um last but not least um doing an open source centric development process is a perfect tool to become famous uh, and renowned about your um, peers. So that that might be socially very rewarding for individuals and um, uh, for companies, uh, visibility is also an important aspect. So who I am, that's me, uh, you can't see me right now. Um, I'm Frederick. I own a diploma in business informatics from the Otto von Guericke University in Magdeburg, uh, where I came from my hometown of Hamburg, which is in the north of Germany, um, to study. I, initially, I wanted to go back uh, after uh, the pre-graduate studentship, a bachelor student after two years. That didn't work out that well because Magdeburg is such a lovely small city that you can um, do a lot of change. And uh, as a matter of fact, the university is a great spot to, to learn about ERP systems. So um, I, I decided to stay there, take my company there, and now I'm living and um, yeah, having my family also in Magdeburg. Um, that's the reason why I did a PhD. Um, one of the reasons why I did a PhD after I, uh, I, I come successfully defended my diploma thesis, I did that on strategic system landscape engineering uh, for, for small medium enterprises. Uh, nowadays, I'm still an associated researcher at the Otto von Gerich University in Magdeburg. That's, um, that means I, I'm still doing science um, from time to time. And I'm a member of the Digitization Council at the Saxony, uh, Saxony Anna Global Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Um, and um, uh, as some of you might know, a member of the board of the Udo Community Association since uh, late 2018. So now on the ma major topic. So um, on the strategic impact of being open. So to me, there are um, different aspects of um, of uh, being open. Uh, first is obvious. Um, uh, if you deal with open source software, you can either be adopt a free rider strategy or a first mover strategy. So um, 
whereas Freerider doesn't have uh, doesn't have much to do with open source. It's just like you you um, anticipate that there is open source code. You take it, you use it, and you commercialize it. Uh, first mover uh, first mover approach is something uh, where you put your code early on into a community and get early feedback. That is, uh, to my take, uh, the, the the primary idea that um, Linus Torvalds had when he said, uh, um, given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. Um, becoming an, an, a, a, an open source developer, um, you, you, you can obtain an expert state um, in in your company, so um, if you start to 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 inter uh, interact with the open source community, um, you, the the learning curve is quite steep because um, there are many many um, experts among the open source community that teach you uh, on how to build quality, and that is a colla inherently collaborative process where you learn a lot about the the the, the framework itself. Uh, the the circumstances in which you develop, and you get uh, to know uh, an entirely new new family. The advantage of of being open source is you can build standards early on and became famous for them. Um, among the OCA community, we have a lot lots of people that are um, developing something and release that early on. Um, just uh, to name, for instance, the MIS builder of Axoni or the DDMRP module of our uh, colleagues uh, at Fortflow. These are all um, um, sometimes even uh, scientific standards that have been built into uh, auto, auto modules and the companies themselves got famous for building them. So of course, uh, for an individual developer, uh, doing open source also means uh, creating job opportunities because um, an individual that is contributing to open source is, um, is visible in, in GitHub, is visible among peers, is visible among uh, other uh, vendors, and visible uh, in, the, in the whole community. And for, for companies, uh, it, mm, uh, it, it, it also generates leads. I'm pretty sure that visibility, technical strength that is inherently um, ending up in, in code contributed to an open source community um, is reviewable, can be seen by potential customers and even larger leads, and uh, therefore will generate leads in your domestic market. Um, and then, uh, of course, the maintenance costs of releasing something early on on the mid and long run are significantly smaller than if you, uh, if you develop something and keep it just for your own. Just imagine a generic piece of software that different people in the community may use um, and you do not uh, publish that early on. There is no chance that somebody else um, uh, bring, brings in new ideas into that code that uh, nobody else can um, migrate that code to a new version of Odoo. So um, by not going open source with your code, um, you significantly reduce the likelihood uh, um, of uh, lower maintenance costs, which is at the end bad for your customer and for yourself as well, because you have to uh, you have to maintain over and over the own code. <clears throat> of course, um, releasing something early up also reduces technical depth for a simple simple reason. If you re uh, if you um, contributed early on. It, the likelihood that it's gonna, that it's going to be apported to a newer version and then being available when a new version is, is created or shortly after is quite high. So what we can say is that you can learn almost for free. And of course, you stay up to date uh, with the core evolution, with the community ecosystem as such, and you know people um, <coughs> in the community to ask, uh, for instance, if you have a certain problem at hand. So uh, naturally, and um, if, if there are so many opportunities, uh, there are also some disadvantages. Um, one of the disadvantages of um, releasing uh, things early on is becoming enterprised. I, I termed that becoming enterprised. You may have heard the talk of our um, founder, um, Fabien, uh, yesterday, and there is always a continuous ongoing 
um, discussion on what uh, um, is in community stays in community and what is an enterprise stays in enterprise. And if you look at the, at the reality, it's often the case that among this discussion, um, there is some frictions. There are plenty of examples in, in the past of the Odo community where as somebody released a good idea as a new piece of code, and then eventually Odo took it over, developed it totally new from scratch to be a part of the community versus our enterprise product. Just uh, refact, not not just take the code from the from the um, from the community, but reinvent the the whole thing themselves. Um, this is of course not what you what you want. You would like to build a standard that 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 ends up in an upstream product, but that process is um, uh, not always um, what happens. Of course, for an entrepreneur, for a company. Uh, there, there could be a threat that uh, an external job offers um, uh, end up at your employees' um, workbenches. Of course, this is not what you want. But at, on the other hand, uh, um, um, we all want good uh, resources to work for us. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, people want uh, motivating jobs. So uh, um, it's, it's good for us all if people keep motivated and keep rewarded for, for the good thing they are doing. Um, of course, there's in, in the first place, I think a competitive disadvantage um, to adopt a open source central process because uh, in the first place, um, you need to do a conceptualization. You need to think of uh, what is generic in your module, how to, how to slice a module, or how to slice a contribution to the OCA. And this engineering process is, is good on the mid and long run because it keeps the, the, the code maintainable. It keeps the code generic versus um, um, specific in, 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 in some regards. But at the, uh, in the first place, that means you have to ask your customer to pay more for, for your conceptual work. And this is often disre disregarded by customers as being disadvantageable because it costs money. Uh, update work, um, rework and migrate changes um, done by others. So um, of course, uh, this, is, uh, this may, 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 be a, um, uh, may be a disadvantage as well that uh, when, when, when uh, other ideas pour in and uh, they the, the generic piece of the code that you initially contributed uh, increases in, uh, in footprint, then you ha have to migrate this code into the future. At least that would be desirable in the community that you, uh, that you adopt the PSC position and uh, take care of your own code and migrate that further. So that is also, uh, can also be disregarded as a disadvantage because that costs you money or at least time. <clears throat> So what are the challenges to my take? Oh, sorry. Um, I think when you adopt an open source centric development process, you can't, you can't, or at least you shouldn't just start. You have to dig. And by digging, I mean you have to go into the community. You have to address the, the, the community mailing list uh, or our new Discord channel to see what people did something in the area you want to innovate in. Because if you don't do so, <clears throat> you're very much likely to end up um, having developed some code that somebody else has already done or that has, uh, somebody else has, uh, uh, has done in a quite similar way but in different areas. And then you might ending up um, uh, having developed 80% at, at, at your, your desk, um, having created a concept and all that kind of stuff, and then realizing that the work has already been done. That's a great waste of, of work time. We don't want that, but that requires you as a company and every individual to, to start digging first and asking questions and thinking about architecture in the first place instead of just starting to code. Um, <clears throat> often you have to, to find to interface um, 
to to uh, to um, to do the architecture in order to find the interface. And by interface, in that regard, I mean internal interface between modules. So you have to you you have to decide how to slice a module, where to put the the, the generic piece of your um, of your artifact in. Is, is the entire work being a generic module in, in, in some area or is it split among different modules? So this is always a discussion that needs to take place. Um, so um, you have to think of interfaces that you might not think of if you develop it just as one module in your local instance. Yeah, and then finally you have to search for where it belongs to. So um, if you have a, a solid concept on how it, how it should be architected, that at the end of the day, you, you, you need to put it somewhere. So now about reach. Well, there are different, uh, different ways in which, you can, uh, in, in which you can do a difference. For instance, um, by doing an open source um, uh, first development approach, you will you will most certainly build uh, or being part of a community of interest. Uh, there are many, many examples for that where people um, contribute to modules um, where, where they build a certain co community of interest in certain areas, domains, and that often relates to their own customers. So where you have customers, you build a community of interest because your developers are innovating there. Uh, and that um, makes you um, being able to be connected among all the um, uh, domain level experts in the whole world. Of course, uh, also local communities are built out, especially um, uh, among the localizations. As, you, as, as uh, uh, most, if not all of you know, um, Odo is, an, is a very strong framework, but it's ha it has its issues in uh, certain localizations. So having good localizations is a, 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 a driving force and having a good ERP foundation and that is not always as good as, as as it as it is for instance in um, Mexico or Spain or France but sometimes less good as for instance in let's say Germany because I'm I'm, I'm from Germany um, of course uh, it a being part of a of, of a global whole also unveils uh, s synergies amongst people so there are plenty of examples where uh, different partners that that uh, in an in a traditional um, in a traditional economy would be considered as competitors even work together and uh, uh, address larger accounts. And uh, I don't know if many or all of you had um, attended the uh, the the keynote speech of uh, Fabian uh, this year of Auto Experience. Um, he said that uh, Odo um, is only uh, getting 1% of the market. So there is huge, huge um, potential in using that synergies and even addressing larger accounts. And uh, to my personal take, I, I think Odo is just starting to address these uh, large accounts. Of course, you will find collaborators that help you on leveraging that synergies you may find new employees that work for you. And after all, and that this is the greatest news of them all, you, you, you will find really nice people and good friends because uh, open source is, um, and gathers around people that have a certain mindset and that certain mindset is, is quite great. So uh, agility versus majority. Um, yeah, we all want uh, to, to have and that matter a code at the end of the day. But it, on the other hand, um, especially if you're dealing with uh, small accounts, you have to uh, release early. So there is a concept that is called release early. And often you all know that that's quite basic to, to open source and basically means that you should not sit on your code until it's really finished and every hook and every edge is, is, is round. No, you should start to contribute something early on. It must be admitted that the OCA community wasn't that well prepared for um, adopting early releases because uh, the the other community um, uh, requires the, dev the individual developer to respect the rules and uh, the contribution quality um, guidelines. And I think there is always a trade-off. We had great discussions among the board how we could improve that 
And I think we came up with a quite solid idea. I don't, I don't even know whether this is uh, now finally uh, published, but we're we're on the on the final uh, on the final uh, steps to to take some changes here in um, the um, agility versus majority um, discussion. So uh, of course um, you have to take design choices. Um, when you build software, you know that nothing has ever been built in the same way twice. So there is also um, often opinionation behind it. So people take a, a certain design decisions that are not inherently wrong or good, but uh, different. And then there is a, a lot of discussion going on and you have to be at the end of the, uh, the day contributing to open source is also a democratic process. So you have to um, uh, agree uh, uh, to be an agreeable person at the end of the day to read something. So about communi communications, what you, can you do? Of course, there's a mailing list uh, or there are many mailing lists that you may find on, on our webpage. Uh, I have put uh, um, links underneath my slides. So I, I hope that the slides will be available um, after, after the talk. Uh, if 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 not, uh, I'm I'm happy to to share these links, uh, but you're gonna find them on on the website as well. Um, you should use um, uh, do massive use of of GitHub issues because we use GitHub issues in the OCA to to command on code and pull requests and ask people to uh, to improve their code. And of course, we have plenty of chat opportunities uh, with Discord being the latest among them. And I'm. Um, Pretty sure that uh, this call will be the tool that we're using from now on. So finally, I promised you that uh, um, open source also means uh, um, that you may become famous and renowned about your um, uh, among your uh, peers, but that uh, comes at a certain um, requirements. First of all, uh, it is a good practice in open source communities that you be polite and that you respect, uh, respect the code of conduct. Uh, to be honest, we haven't had a co code of conduct for quite long, although we had discussed on, the, on it uh, for quite some time. Now, uh, in preparation of this uh, great event, uh, these two days we've um, released a code of conduct, at least for the conference. And I think, I'm thinking that um, we are uh, soon publishing a code of conduct that is generic for, for the work in our community. But even if we had no explicitly written code of conduct, we, we still have a code of conduct among open source communities. Uh, that is basically, you have to be humble, you have to be helpful, or you should be humble, you should be helpful, you should be agreeable, and things like that. And after all, be active. That means contribute, ask questions, share ideas, share feedback, and take an active role. Taking an active role to me is something that is um, of utmost importance for an open source community. Running a, a conferences online or offline like these requires many, many people and, and, and quite some time and preparation. Um, among the board, we have had uh, several 10 se sessions on preparing uh, the whole thing in, in COVID-19 times. Uh, without Rebecca, we couldn't have done it anyhow. So a great clap of hands goes to Rebecca, our general secretary. If we wouldn't wouldn't be able to 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 pay her, we we would not be anywhere close. So thanks, Rebecca, for all you do for the community, and I hope we have you among uh, for many many years to come. Um, yeah, and then uh, uh, I think uh, being helpful and to people, give, uh, give, being ready to, to take people and newbies by hand and that are confused about the level of quality measurements we have in place and things like that to, uh, is, is, is important. We, we, were not, we were not always good at that in, in the past, but we're trying to improving that in order to, 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 um, to increase the, the, the footprint of those that are willing and happy to contribute to the uh, OTA community. 
Then finally, uh, I'll, I, I, uh, I, I'd like to give you some suggestions. First, there is a great, uh, great blog post entry that uh, says something about 10 reasons why I contribute to the Odo community. Of course, I'm, my, my take is generally valid for all open source communities, but uh, as we are the Odo Community Association, we'd like you to be part of Odo. And uh, we think that as you're attending uh, my talk uh, or seeing the talk after, uh, you're interested in Odo as well. So please consider uh, to contribute. There is a great, uh, great uh, link here in, uh, that explains you how to contribute. And then, of course, as, as I said, we have some, uh, some costs, so server hardware costs, preparation of events costs, Zoom costs, um, a general secretary needs to be afforded, and uh, different other expenses as well. So um, being, becoming a sponsor uh, uh, would be more than desirable. And as I'm the treasurer, I, I hope that we, uh, that we end up in having some more sponsors next year. Um, becoming a member is also of utmost importance because the governance structure of the whole uh, ecosystem um, uh, is grounded by, by membership. So if you are a member, you can um, be voted as a delegate and eventually as a board member. And an open source community is a democratic process. We always need a new people on board. So uh, you're highly welcome to become a member if you are not already to let you vote as a delegate or propose yourself as a delegate to the community. Um, each year, I think we can take uh, among 10 new delegates. Um, delegate vote and general assembly will be soon. So I hope that many, many of you will consider to become a member. And then of course we have um, events. This year, uh, no physical events, unfortunately, but I think that is valid for the whole world. Um, but so far, I personally had a great experience with the online conference that we do. So I hope you had the same. Um, that's, it, that's it for me. I thank you for the audience and um, staying prepared for questions. And I hope I can answer some of them. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, let's see if we have any question here. Doesn't seem like this, right? No, obviously no question. Uh, yes, we have a question from Virgin. Uh, do your company work with Odoo Enterprise version? Was your talk an invitation to stay open source? Um, well, my, my, my company personally, we, we are trying to adopt an almost always 100% open source. Um, way that means uh, we're contributing to we're trying to contribute to the open source community wherever possible that is not not always easy because um, me as an entrepreneur I have to convince uh, my employees always uh, to, to, to to take that um, um, additional leap uh, to the community contribute ask first but I'm continuously doing that because I'm an event I, I'm calling myself an evangelist um, we, from time to time, yes, we do also use the enterprise version, but uh, we are very focused on, uh, on, on, the, on the community version, yes. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, um, why, um, that's why I hope that the community will flourish. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, it must be said that also community has it, it's a, a, also enterprise has its advantages. And, um, Developing a um, first citizen uh, open source approach doesn't necessarily mean that you should not use the enterprise version because it's, uh, it's good for the entire ecosystem when not only we have a strong community, but we also have a strong vendor. So that goes hand in hand. And as, as long as the 
uh, discussions between both of them are vivid and um, regular and honest and transparent, um, we really uh, we, we we really strive for a better whole of uh, together. I hope that answers the question, Wiki. Okay, um, let's see if someone else has a question here. Yes, uh, so Virgin says you answer the question. Okay. No questions anymore? Yeah, in this case, I think we can move on, right? Yeah. Thank you for your audience once again. <laughs>